Hello my friends, I hope you are all having a wonderful time and I'm excited to be here for a new episode of uh, Learning from the Masters where today we are going to talk about um, portraits and portrait composition. We are not going to focus on just one artist, we are going to just uh, watch several artists and see what uh, what ideas can be taken from these portraits and what can be useful for uh, for for your own work for my own work as well because I'm I'm just like you trying to learn trying to know more and um, I'm not saying that I'm an expert on anything just saying that I'm uh, just having a quick look at this thing and uh, having fun First of all, just a quick message for my French uh, audience, uh, if, if there are any. So I'm going to be speaking in French now. Salut à tous pour les Français. Petit message rapide. Donc la vidéo, le court vidéo est enfin sorti en version française. La version tant attendue est enfin sortie. Donc euh, elle est disponible dès maintenant sur Gumroad. Vous avez euh, le trailer qui est sur ma chaîne. Sinon vous allez sur mon site florentfarge.com. Et donc dans cette vidéo, c'est la même, euh, la, la version euh, anglaise qui était sortie, c'est la même chose, c'est la traduction. Et vous aurez euh, tout ce que vous avez besoin de savoir sur la peinture à l'huile du début à la fin, c'est-à-dire de la préparation de la surface euh, aux dernières étapes de finition, au vernissage, tout sur les pinceaux, tout sur les différents, les différents types de pigments. Bref, une, une mine d'informations. Euh, j'ai enfin réussi à la sortir en français dans deux langues donc voilà euh, si vous êtes intéressé n'hésitez pas et ça devrait euh, ça devrait vous faire plaisir et vous euh, et vous permettre de vous permettre d'ouvrir des potentialités en peinture ok voilà je vais parler anglais maintenant parce que je ne sais pas euh... ok parce que sur l'anglais, je règle une petite fenêtre par-ci par-là. Ok. Voilà. Est-ce que tout le monde entend Est-ce que ça se... Est-ce que tout le monde entend Ok. Alright, so today we're going to have a look at some... Oh, oops. We are going to have a look at some portraits and, uh, and uh, hopefully learn a little bit about composition. Salut les gars I don't have my view. Hi Kevin. Good job. I'm just trying to uh, get some windows at the right spot because uh, yeah okay bonsoir jumeau carte j'espère que tout le monde va bien So portraits, uh, I'm gonna go ahead in, in English because I guess many people are gonna come uh, and speak English so far it's mostly French, but well. Um, all right, so what we are going to have a look for regarding uh, portraits and, and uh, composition is posture, look and, and light. So posture is like the, the movement of the body, the direction of the head, direction of the shoulders. Uh, look is of course, uh, well, the look where the eyes point and how the light uh, plays a role in that. That's the only thing we're going to have a look. We're not going to have a look too much at side objects like um, or things like this. No, not. We're gonna focus mainly on these uh, three points. 
All right, so um, regarding posture, we're gonna have we're gonna go with the most important first. So in a portrait, whenever you have a portrait, the first thing you want to uh, the first thing you want to take care of is oops, sorry, you don't want this big. First thing you want to take care of is the eyes. After the eyes, the head, because it guides the eyes. After the head, shoulders. Shoulders. Then the, the hands. And of course the arms. But the hands are, I would say, more important than the, the arms because like hands are more expressive, so the arms just follow the movement of the hands. So wherever the hand goes, the arm follows. So. And, and then the hips. So this would be the most important and it goes like this. So when you compose, and maybe feet, if you have a, a large scale uh, portrait, but like that's the least important thing. Well, it's still. Um, so, so basically, yeah, we're gonna have a look at these. Let me just come back. Hey, my, hey, Mark, from Kansas. Okay. Uh, let me just grab a eraser. All right, so let's have a look now. Let's have a look, a look at um, the ink, this. So where, whenever you, whenever you try to set up your composition for a portrait, you basically start with the eyes. It's like the most important part. Like it's not a secret. You kind of have to start with the eyes. So where the eyes look is is up to you. You can look away. You can look straight to to the audience. You can look down. You can look up. It's a little bit more rare. Um, so basically, you have four choice: away, down, up, or towards the, the viewer. Hi Kush, Adam. And um, so basically, when you have found this, the, the, the eyeballs can go wherever they want, of course. So you have to now decide how you locate the eyes. So the look and the eyes, the, the location of the eyes, are like two separate things. So you have some some room to experiment and play with the, the, the different things between how the eyes, where the eyes uh, are and where, it, where the person looks. So it's gonna give you many different effects. So right here it's staring at the, at the viewer. So kind of in a, brings a deeper connection between like the, the model and and the, and the viewer or the artist. So, uh, well, it's not not a secret. I think it's uh, pretty straightforward. So let's look at the eyes. So this basic shape on the head gives you a basic indication of the direction of the head like the motion of the skull how is it like located in 3d so if you want to compose um, you can draw this line right here that follows the, the, the temporal bone like there's a curve right here and this basically gives you the side of the head. 
So it tells you how your head is moving around. So basically right there, she is um, looking three quarters. And um, let me just erase that. She's looking three quarters and the head is tilted a little bit down. So it's a very elegant, very subtle, very subtle way of placing the head, very balanced. There is no, nothing uneven in how the, how everything is located, how everything is, is set up. It's all very, very quiet. So the head, we could say, is is very stable in this composition. Like, well, of course it is, but um, it's not always the case. So now you have to think about when, after you you have taken care of the eyes and the head. Next come shoulders. So right here, well, a good trick is to try to locate the the, the, the main ball of, of the shoulder and try to find the clavicle as well, like a key point, and, and see how it relates. So basically, the, you see the, the difference between the the position of the head and the shoulders which gives a some kind of movement like a spiral movement so it's very stable yet everything is sort of turning slightly like very stable but still there is some 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 subtlety in, in the posture and the movement, uh, so pretty pretty cool, uh, pretty cool, still classical uh, classical composition idea. So put the shoulders and the, and the head in a different direction. Like if, if you put the shoulders and the head in the exact same direction, uh, it's okay. Looks a little bit boring. Looks a little bit a little bit. Um, You know, unoriginal. And after that, well, well, this is the most important thing. Well, of course, the, the neck, but the neck just relates the shoulders. So if you have, you you shouldn't think, oh, after the head, I'm gonna take care of the of the neck. Well, the neck is uh, is just the link between the shoulders and the head. You have to know exactly how to place the shoulders first and the neck is going to naturally make the connection but like the neck is only bearing the weight of the of the of the head which is already something in a portrait it's important you have to follow the weight but the shoulders uh, carry the most weight so you have to to stabilize the shoulders first hi Jennifer Swan Jenny Phil Swan How's it going? And next, the hands, because like hands are always, uh, can ha they can play a role. You can have hands or not in a, in a portrait, depends. And, um, and they play a role because uh, like they are a very expressive, expressive part of, of the human body. So they play a, a role in, in how the portrait feels. So yeah. Um, just I don't I don't think I said which work it was. It's portrait 
of um, just hold on. It's Portrait of how is she called Louise Antoinette Feu Ardent by Jean Francois Millet. Okay, let's have a look at another portrait. So this one is Portrait of Rafael Romero Barros by Tomas Munoz Lucena. I don't know this artist, just liked like this painting. Screen back. So right here, it's uh, the 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 head is looking straight up, right in the eyes of of the viewer, which is a, a very very direct approach to to representing the model. You, you look straight into the eyes of the, the person. Still. There is, so you could say, like, it's very stable, it's very, it's very frontal, like a very frontal view of the, of the model. Still you have some, some movement, like in this, in this um, painting, which is, it's hard to convey movement and dynamism. Um, but you still have some, because if you first take a look at the eyes, they are tilted. So there is a tilt. So the entire head is tilted. So there is no... There is no angle. Still there is an angle as it is tilted like this. Still a good idea to bring some type of movement. Um, making a, a, a painting or a portrait that just stands very still very very like frontal view um, can be a little bit, a little bit static so you want to play on on a slight unbalance which makes it feel that uh, not everything is just straight up in the center like basic things there is some small imbalance which is very subtle and it makes things look more natural. Hello Vox, my favorite topic, yay! So I'm glad, I'm glad you're here to experience that. Um, next, shoulders, like shoulders in this one are almost, almost not relevant at all, like just basically draw these two shapes. But it's, it's important to know that the, the, the I don't know, if the painting was originally designed like this. So the shoulders uh, are out of the frame, which makes things very steady. So generally you, you consider that the shoulders kind of uh, make the, like they are supposed to, to be like the foundations of, of the portrait. Generally the portrait stops um, under the breasts, like maybe, um, maybe a little bit above the waist, like most portraits. So if you look here, for instance, the this makes a very stable shape that helps everything sit. And when it goes like this, it's even more stable. And, and there's a, um, a play with this hand right here also, which is kind of fun. Uh, so like painting without this hand would be very, like very, I don't know. How, 
I lost my word. Hmm, where was I on? What was I going to say? Um, kind of boring without the hand. Like, the hand plays a great role in bringing, like, variety and, and a, a touch of, of fun in the hand. So, pretty cool. Also, a nice trick is whenever you have a V shaped in the cutter or the the neck or or yeah static yeah and the hand kind of kind of makes it feel like if it was something like a you know a, 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 it would make things like the, the hand kind of pulls the the head towards this side i don't know how to express it but still brings a nice dynamic element that I think uh, this portrait needs because other than that um, um, it would be like very static as you say a box uh, you say I'm attempting a painting in this pose but have hair to wave otherwise it would be uh, static yeah, you can play with uh, various various elements to bring dynamic. If you choose to go something to to go with something as like straight and and stable, uh, well, it's nice to bring to bring some movement, like make it feel like like it's a real uh, portrait, because we we rarely stand like this. See like very rare maybe on on uh, photos for for ID for ID like ID cards but other than that like we rarely we rarely stand in this manner so um, if you want to make a a great portrait you want to bring uh, a little bit more a little bit more of um, a little bit more movement all right, so let's take more movement, a little bit more, with this work by uh, Tranquilo Cremona, which is uh, who is also an artist that I I didn't know before, uh, which is called Portrait of Benedetto Junk Junk by artist Tranquilo Cremona. All right. I have no idea who this artist is. Hey, hey Mac Collins. Hey, Fimax. Mm -hmm. It looks like his head has not enough weight. It flows despite the hand. No cheek grease. Well, that's probably the character also. Like, sometimes a portrait is, is still a portrait, so... Um, of have to follow how the person looks as well so if you have like bad model bad portrait not not necessarily though you can still make a, a great portrait with a model that that everyone would call uh, ugly all right so well forget about the brush style brush work we're not going to focus on that today's going to be all about all about the composition all right so um, first of all, the eyes uh, straight into the viewers. There's still a slight angle, it's tilted at a slight angle, which is uh, which is cool. But the face is uh, at a slight angle. It's three quarters also, but the angle is not too too big. That's all the side, the side of the head. So shoulders, shoulders are, so the, the, the face is almost straight. So there's not, not a very big angle to make it perfectly straight. But the shoulders are very, very tilted compared to the, 
to the head. So if you be see the, the next shoulder is right here behind. So like there's a huge angle. There's a huge angle. So he's basically returning his head like like he was doing something in this direction and all of a sudden you disturb you disturbed him and he looked away from his thing to look at you basically brings this dynamic element so like he was reading or doing doing his thing and uh, and yeah exactly he's turning right in the moment so that's a nice feature to have like it's brings a very very cool uh, very and very natural uh, very natural element like it's a it's a very natural thing to do so next the hands hands are like busy and clearly in this direction showing something so directing the viewer towards this uh, like this the book and well, you place the hand wherever you want it to be. You you don't necessarily um, you don't necessarily need to 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 really care about where the hands are. Like the arms are very mobile, so if you need to put the hand a little bit higher, well, it might feel awkward if you make it too much. But like, I mean, if your canvas is not big enough. You, you, you can always like push the hands like the hand can be like can vary in position and still look the shoulders doesn't move so basically the hands are very free and the arm just fall so uh, which is why it's uh, if you weren't there in the beginning it's always eyes head shoulders Hand, hands, arm, but it's secondary, and and hips. So the hips you don't see them, but you you can kind of guess that they are in the the same direction. Like if there was a a, a shape like with this sternum, so the the hips are oriented in the same direction. The arms just follow. So very dynamic pose, and this element as well brings the reinforces the the direction, the general direction of this arm, which also points to the book. Everything kind of points to the book, like you're disturbing him right in this in this reading. So the the you could say. All this, all this thing, there is a, a complete connection between the eyes and the book, and everything. Just I'm gonna take it another color because well, you're, not, you're not gonna see a lot. So everything just guides your eyes from here all the way to here. So it's basically the dynamic, the, like the general dynamic of the entire portrait. Card. It feels like a snapshot, like it captures a brief moment. Your background music sounds like an old video game. Um, does it? Is it disturbing the music, or not? Well, too loud or what? I don't know. Yeah, I have a new tablet. It's pretty cool. Pretty, uh, pretty large, and I'm trying to, trying to take uh, advantage of it. It's really great to annotate and all, and I'm, uh, I'm starting to get, uh, to get to use it uh, for the, for my paintings. I'm preparing my paintings with this, and it's, uh, it's a real, uh, it's a real plus. Um, okay, let's uh, do this one. Let me remember uh, who painted this. It's called Portrait in Green by Alessandro Dal Prato. 
hope I am not mispronouncing. Yeah, it's 15 inches. Uh, no, it's pretty, pretty, um, pretty easy actually. I have an A5 Wacom, but the pain gestures, I have a learning curve. All right, so yeah, it's called portrait in green. So maybe it's an it's an indication that the portrait is maybe just a pretext for the for the green. So yeah, uh, so look at the reflected lights. Yeah, there are tons of uh, of cool, sorry, of cool effects right here with bluish, bluish reflected lights. Like basically, all the shadows are are green, blue. Look at this. So yeah, it's called the green portrait or blue portrait. What did I say? Uh, Alessandro Dal Prato, Prato, like. P R A T O. Um, I should maybe give you a link. Let me just give you a link. I don't know if it's, mm, it's supposed to be a no. Uh, how can I share? Because I had I I found all the pictures on in a Google Arts project, and I I kind of made a selection so. But yeah, uh, I don't know if I can share the link in the in the in the YouTube chat. It's gonna be uh, it's not gonna be easy. All right. So first of all, let's look at the eyes. No, I don't want white. Uh, let's take. So the eyes are. So the look. It's looking down, she's looking down. There is a, a strong angle, so it's a very strong. So three quarter, but like more than three quarter, what's more than three quarter? There is a strong play with the light and all. So she's looking away, looking down, which is kind of a, an element that brings a kind of feeling of feelings of like nostalgia, um, like remembering things, um, being like very. In, in like emotions, reverie, and the uh, shoulders are kind of in the same, like the angle is the same, it's just that the, well, it's almost the same, right? Almost the same angle, yet, not entirely. So you could say like the position of the head relating to the shoulders is is similar. It's um, the also feels like the the painter is looking up. Oops, sorry. Also feels like the painter is kind of looking from above. Hi, Dirac. Thank you. Sup, everyone. Just found this channel. These live streams are a great idea. Thank you. Pensive, pensiveness, pensiveness. I didn't even know it was a word, but yeah, pensiveness is a is a great um, it's a great word. Uh, yeah, Alessandro Dal Prato. Uh, just with a just one L, I think. All right. So now the hands also, which are um, right now like crossed like this in a very very delicate, delicate manner, which, like this, conveys more ideas of shyness, of 
you know, being someone very private, very, um, it's more intimate, it's not like open, it's not displaying anything, it's, it's kind of making it feel like she's all into her interior um, emotions, like it's, uh, so it doesn't, like the hands can be directed out from the inside out or or from or they can be like uh, stuck together uh, it's not it doesn't bring the same type of idea someone uh, very shy like this um, I don't know do you feel tension in his hands I don't feel tension at all, I think it's uh, maybe she's holding something. Sorry for the pixelated view. Uh, maybe she's holding something at least, but I don't really feel the tension. I don't know about you. She seems closed. Yeah, exactly. That's what the hands mean. To me, the hands are pretty relaxed though. Like when you just sit like this. I mean, hands like this are, are hands like these. Uh, it's a very natural way of holding your hands like when you're not like this is tension for your hand like you have to tense your muscles and your your ligaments to make your hand straight up like this and when you when you just relax your hand naturally goes like this so if you put your hand like this your fingers just naturally like if you're completely relaxed like your fingers generally have a tendency to to bend, especially if you press very slightly. You don't have to put any form of, of tension. So, in my opinion, there's no tension in there. Uh, maybe you can feel some tension, but I, uh, because of the of the play on color and the, the the brushwork and all, but I do not feel tension too much. I feel. I feel a, a sense of privacy more than than tension. But I don't know, this is debatable. I thought the angle of the up, upper hand was somewhat not relaxed. It's pretty relaxed. What you could say is that the, the, the position of of her back is not very relaxed though. Could you could argue that her spine and she's probably not seated very comfortably right there and um, another important element as well is also when you whenever you're designing a, a portrait so is um, it's um, how much space you give to your uh, your model so right there she has a lot of space right so imagine that let's imagine that we crop sorry let's imagine that we crop her this way See how it changes right now? Like there's not the same uh, the same type of, of sense. Like the, the the space that you give to your model, like outside of the of of the head of the face, it plays a great role in in how everything feels. Um, basically right there she has a lot of room room uh, having a lot of space around you when you're uh, design around your model when you when you're designing your portrait can be a good thing but it can also be a, a kind of of oppressive thing kind of like if you have um let's say if you have a portrait that the the head is here and all the rest is just empty 
things, it's going to feel very oppressive. So generally there's a balance between giving the, the, the model some room and, and like pressing it. And right here, you could say that she kind of has not a lot of room on the back. So we basically like she's almost pushed by the chair. She's almost or pushed or being just she's leaning on the, on the back of the canvas right here maybe to give more space so this space could like represent like the dreams the reverie the inner like the inner th uh, thoughts sorry inner thoughts and this could be what's bearing her weight almost so she kind of feels uncomfortable like she's almost bearing her entire weight on on the right of the canvas hi Carrie. So yeah, space around the portrait is also important. Like it's a great uh, uh, thing to use if you like. It conveys uh, a lot of of different different emotions. All right, let's uh, have a look at this one now. This one is Life and Dyke. And this is called, um, let me just find it, Portrait of Martin Pepin, Pepin, like P-E-P-I-J-N. So looking at the, the, the viewer again, face is angled, like three quarters, pretty basic. Very stable portrait and see when I was talking about empty rooms see there's a kind of this is the right amount of balance that you want for something very neutral so you want a little bit more room here than here generally like a little bit more room where the eyes are this is a basic like thing if you bring unbalance um, you you want slightly more room right there in the previous case we had a lot more room which brings something which tells something already like this is significant like this uh, means something all this room right there means something whereas right here it's just basic background like it's just surrounding the 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 face so it's not as as uh, meaningful in that sense so like there's some writing though so it's kind of meaningful in that sense but not in not really in terms of, of composition tell me if the music is too loud because I, I I have no um, I have no feedback on the sound. Well, I can hear the sound, but I, I don't I don't have the same volume as you guys, so it's hard for me to know. So right here when I was talking about hands being open or closed, well this one is an open hand. It is a, a significant hand, especially with all this black, all this black around here the position of the hand is as quite significant uh, for this painting like this is very the classical classical portrait 
composition, like very, very classical, typical of like, well, I should have started with this one maybe, like because it really brings a, all the simple ideas done right. So pretty cool. The last music was a bit distracting, but the sound level was fine. Okay, just good to know. I don't know all the music's like a playlist and sometimes like, they can get out of control. They can get out of control. All right, so now let's look at another one. Let's look at another one, if you don't mind. Oh, I really like this one. It's by Eugène Carrière and hmm, it's called Portrait, Portrait of Pablo Casals by Eugène Carrière. Eugène Carrière is famous for these um, these brushed out uh, paintings with only basically diluted diluted earth pigments with um, with solvents like basically brings a, an entire painting done with only the imprimatura stage so it's pretty it's a pretty cool thing it always brings a very atmospheric atmospheric feeling and um, and this is generally like what you'd get from the first steps of a painting even though it would not necessarily be uh, as good as this one can I check Roberto Ferri Ferri's work uh, well I'll try I don't have it prepared right now right right now but I can check it for uh, later for next time so pretty cool, um, pretty cool brushwork. But no, we we're not talking about brushwork though. Let's talk about about the composition. So face is is straight, so you can see both ears. Face is straight, but you have an angle, a strong angle this time. And the hand plays as well and everything is just like in some sort of of, of strong movement well this is also in big part due to the the brushwork so there's a pretty pretty strong sense of of movement in there which is, uh, which is really interesting. Just closing tabs. I really like Carrier's um, brushwork, though. It's fascinating how how simple it is, and yet how how strong. This um, this painting brings a very relaxed element. See the empty space. It's quite a lot of empty space on this side, but he's not looking at it, with it which is the difference with the the previous um, painting. It's not looking into the space. And he's kind of relaxingly leaning on this side of the of the canvas. It's like chilling out. Feels very casual. Yeah, exactly. Very chilled out. 
Uh, maybe because it's looking at the viewer with such confidence, you know? And, and because he's not looking into the void here, he's not looking out. His head is, is like comfortable and you you don't necessarily see but there would be a shoulder right here somehow like supporting the head so very it brings a very stable element to this maybe not here no sorry maybe here So this is probably why it feels so so casual, so very chilled out um, pose. So pretty, uh, pretty interesting if you want to display someone with uh, a lot of, of assurance. Let's have a look at the portrait that displays the entire body. This one is by M.T. Müller and his portrait of Santiago Roussinol by M.T. Müller. The hand really brings the casual element. Yeah, I like this. It brings a lot of, of dynamism as well. So it's not a, a painting now, it's a drawing. So a, a really nice drawing, I really like this one. Really like how the level of detail stronger on the hand uh, on the head like you have very detailed aspect right here and as you go down it gets more and more hatchy hatchy hatched out so right here when you have a, a portrait when you see the entire body well, in that case, things change a little bit. Like the eyes, all of a sudden, are not the most uh, the most important thing, even though they still are a very important thing. But if you have the entire body like this, it's almost like the the weight is more important than than the the look in the eyes. So it's more how the person stands rather than uh, exactly what their eyes is look like. It's just like you know you can you can uh, see someone very far away and you don't see the face, you don't see the hair, and maybe they're they have their backs turned, and and you can still see that it is someone you know you, you know this is someone that that like you, you recognize that this is someone you know you you exactly know what person it is even though you don't see the eyes you don't see any features of the hand of the head you don't see the mouth and just see how the person like stands and moves and behaves and we are very good at this we we can find out who a person is by just like from very far away seeing a pose like this. So the most crucial element that you want in this type of, of, of portrait is to have the pose that have a silhouette that conveys the energy of the person. Is it a déhanché pose? Uh, yes, pretty much. Pretty much what well, we'll just called um, contraposto. So basically, you'd have the rib cage right here. And the hips 
would go something like this. So this is the most important part, in my opinion. Is how the the, the the weight is distributed. Even more important maybe than the head. Because like... Well, the head is important, of course. It's a portrait. But... For this type of, of of work, the 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 entire distribution of the weight is very very important. So it's crucial that you get this part right if you want to do something like this. And it's more it's more the attitude. It's not just just the face, just the, the basic uh, likeness that you want. You want the, the full the full package. Alright, let's look at another one. Oh this one I like. Mm -hmm. This is Portrait of Colonel Vasily Tsvetkov by Alexander E. Laktionov. So this is probably a Sovietic uh, colonel, colonel. Which I don't know about. I have never heard, I had never heard about the, the artist before as well. It's not, it's a Russian artist. So the Russian school was very, very good at painting these uh, very Uh, realistic yet expressive and very skin like um, like conveying the texture of the skin especially for older persons they were really good at this type of, of, of work there was a very strong uh, Russian school in the early uh, 1900s all right, so right here, there's many things to say about the pose. Uh, many, uh, many cool things. So you start with the eyes. Inclination of the head. Three quarters again. So now the shoulders. And you have some really cool tricks in there in how the, the model poses. So basically all the weight as you can see is distributed on the table. But um, it's funny because if he was really standing like this, uh, his like elbow would just would just uh, like would just strafe away like it would everything would just um, glide away <laughs> slide away I don't know like everything because the weight would make everything like you know like, like this and uh, so it's a um, it's an artificial pose the pose right here is not natural it's artificial because the weight is not is not settled right here so the weight doesn't, it's not resting there. Or there's a very strong table that's, well, the only thing that can explain this pose is that this table is sturdy enough and basically the weight is right here. Because right here, there's no weight in this arm. So this arm is basically free and it's resting on this side. The, the, the impact is here, like this is where it's happening. It's funny. But still, it 
uh, well, when you want a movement that is that extreme, I mean, you have to have some tricks. So the tricks is to use this table to to block him from falling up, falling like on the side. To make it feel natural. It's not even a table. It's not a table at the right dimensions. No one would just randomly read on a table like this. So you have to use some tricks. It's the trick. Trickery, I say. All right. So everything is happening here. So you have very strong, um, a very strong tilt with both the shoulders and the head and everything feels natural even though it's not natural so it's the the awesome part and the hands are pretty expressive pretty cool right like you have hands with uh, lots of movement and even the thumb Oh my, look at this thumb. Ooh. Kind of uh, feels almost misplaced, I think. Let's go more, more something here. I don't know. Maybe it's something else. Uh, hmm. Hard to know. So, yeah, and like we have a play on the hands and so the entire energy I think we have all seen it goes like this starts around the head basically and creates a very awesome S curve all around the, the entire painting, which is kind of cool. Which is pretty cool. All right. Let's have a look at another work, shall we? Uh, what haven't we seen yet? Maybe this one? This one is by Fontaine Latour and it's a portrait of Madame Fontaine Latour or... Mm. Mademoiselle Marie Fontanato. So she was um, most likely a relative. I don't know if it was uh, the artist's uh, sister. Chat disconnected. Successfully connected. Is everyone here? YouTube's telling me chat disconnected right now. I'm just checking. You're still there. All right, and um, so the eyes are, all right, for, so for this one it's pretty clear. It's looking down at the book, of course. Inclination of the head. Yeah, just listening. Okay, no, I, just, I was just checking because um, the YouTube was giving me some red signals. So, it's always a little bit frightening. I can still hear you. Okay, okay, just checking. Okay. So, it's always very interesting to have someone reading or someone doing something, someone writing, um, almost feels like you're you're kind of spying on the real life of a person. Like 
the, the person is not here for you and you are still looking at, at this person which makes a strange connection like you you see the intimacy more like the person is not looking at you which is what makes it more intimate I don't see I don't know if you see the paradox like it's almost like the, 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 the person refuses to to look at you and yet you see more of her personal life than if she was just staring because like if she's staring she's kind of confronting you she's kind of confronting the the, the eyes and and like yeah if you want to be in front of me like like if if the painting were speaking it would say yeah if you want to be in front of me fine but i'm just looking at you as well i'm i'm looking at you see i'm i'm fine i'm, I'm smiling and all I'm, I'm happy but i'm looking at you i'm confronting your your eyes whereas when you have the person looking away it's almost like like they are more fragile like they are offering their view they are offering their um, faces to you like you're the only one with the power of looking and strangely it brings something of, of intimacy you could think yeah well intimacy the person has to look right to the viewers no because when you look at someone in the eyes you're ready to 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 bear the the weight of of their own gaze at you like you your um your um throwing the ball back basically and this is much more intimate because it's almost like she doesn't know that we are here looking at her really this brings a much more subtle element and uh, an element of like yeah intimacy and privacy we are stepping in the personal life of this lady and what is she reading well the next step is just to go over her shoulders and look at whatever she's reading see it's kind of a kind of um a special relation right so shoulders are very sturdy, very steady right here it's very steady and it's understandable right because first of all she has a, a huge dress like very very uh, a dress with lots of, of like very feathery dress not not feathery but like there's a lot of clothes and and when you're reading you want to be stable like something you have to do for a long time you just don't want to be in this position for reading this guy is clearly not reading he's taking a pose this is a book it's probably the book was important but not to him <laughs> The book was important as a symbol and right here the book is important because of reading it's like right here the book is important and in this one reading is important see it's like there's some subtleties that are almost impossible to to just pick up at first glance but the simple fact that she is looking at the book Whereas he is looking at us, makes a difference. It's very stable. And you have some space right here. I don't know what would happen if we, if she didn't have space. Um, empty room around her head. It's a very basic. Uh, you have just enough room over her head 
It's just the, 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 the limit. It's just the limit, like less room than this and it would feel very uncomfortable. Let's, um, let's crop to see how it goes. See how it feels now? Like this is the the entire thing. How now it feels very uncomfortable. So the space above her head was just the limit that you could go to. And um, I have I'm wondering about this part right here. make a huge difference but because it is very stable already so it doesn't make a huge difference it's still and um, talking about the the, the space so she has not a lot of space around there because the book is important and the book doesn't want to be too low you don't want to put something of interest too low generally wants things to be kind of balanced in the the, the space between the eyes and the and the book is important you don't want to be looking from too close not too so of course to have something balanced uh, you're going to end up with not a lot of room right here but it's, uh, it's because of the composition around around the book and the eyes to balance everything out Let's have, have a final one because I, I cannot stay for too long. Uh, let's see this one. This is by um, Franz Hals. Portrait of a man. All right, so it's pretty, um, pretty simple. Portrait of a man by Franz Hals. I don't know about the colors. I don't know if the colors are, are right. I probably adjust them if it was me. So this is a pretty unique, um, well, not, not pretty unique, but it's uh, not very common. So the, the entire pose go all the way above the, the knees. So it's not super common to have this. Uh, interesting to note that there is a shadow here and the shadow brings uh, life to the space around. So it's not just background, it's a wall. The shadow makes it a wall. If you remove this shadow, it's just a background. And if you put these, it's a wall. It feels like a wall. All right, so first the eyes. Three quarters. Um, so shoulders are hard to locate, but there is a slight tilt. 
I would say there is a a slight contraposto, but it's hard to tell with these um, uh, very, very, um, with as much cloth as there is right here. And the hands, which here, like, are here to provide a, a sense of movement, like have one hand that takes the eyes down and one hand that takes the eyes up. Um, why would a painter choose to paint a person from head to knees? To give an impression of greatness, yes, I think this is the reason. Um, basically, these uh, paintings, I think, were supposed to be displaying like uh, wealthy merchants or like you know important persons, and they were supposed to be publicly displayed. And uh, and you want, yeah, exactly. You want to display some sense of greatness. And basically, wherever you hang your your uh, your 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 painting, wherever the frame is is hung, all this uh, all this space is going to put your eyes at basically at the knees of the person so it's going to be basically forcing your eyes up uh, even more than just if if uh, if it was uh, focused on the face and frame just on the face also there was a there, there's always been like fashion in this type of composition See you, Carrie. Thanks for being here. Yeah, basically, it's uh, supposed to make you look up like this. Yeah, pretty much. You have to look up. I don't have. Do I have any profile? We haven't done any profile. Ah, oh, right. Let's have a look at this one though. The last one. It's also male portrait by Josep Cusax i Cusax. Cusacs y Cusac. Josep, 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 Josep. I don't know. And it's called just male portrait, portrait of a man. There seems to be some signatures. So profile uh, right here have no hands, basically no shoulders. Uh, a profile is um, the easiest type of portrait you can find. So, whenever you, if if you don't exactly know what what to do, or if you if you're not confident that you can start painting a portrait, you can you might want to start with a profile. Uh, a profile is not very very intimate. Doesn't convey a lot of of um, a lot of uh, emotions there's not a lot to a profile because basically the person is almost ignoring you and it's not intimate just it's not like in this one where it feels very intimate profile generally feels very 
indifferent, like, like the person doesn't care really that they are being portrayed. Um, but I don't know. This could be something as something for another composition where the person has to be, like, in uh, in some type of scene where they're supposed to play a role. Basically, people rarely try to be portrayed in uh, in profile because there's no no strong connection between between the the viewer and the and and the model so most people don't don't necessarily want a profile done it can be interesting if you have a uh, a lot more movement into shoulders and hands so if there is a strong movement and you have a profile and you have something like something very like expressive in terms of gesture but right here it's very static so it almost feels like uh, disinterest from this person like like the person is is completely ignoring ignoring like the viewer is completely ignoring us so there's not a strong very strong connection so that's something you have to know something you have you can use as well so see here's this connection because it's looking at you right here no no it's not interested in, in looking at you all right so that's basically it all right uh, my friends, it's gonna be it for today, tonight, and um, for um, whatever, whoever has seen this in the replay, maybe the end of the, for this morning. I don't know. Um, thank you very much for watching. And uh, so I'm announcing today that there's not going to be any stream next Wednesday and uh, next Saturday, most probably. I'm not gonna be around but anyway I uh, wish uh, you a good one and um, and uh, see you for the next episode in in a week from now all right so um, see you guys take care and have fun painting your your portraits bye guys <laughs>